Yeah, this is the meeting of the Wolf Budget Committee. Oh, I thought we should. Tonight we're going to do, uh, yeah. just about cleaning up an agency that's Tri County uh, Community Action and do the electric department. And we got some other business and some approval of minutes. Steve, can you read us from the place? Glad to be. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jim, do you have anything before we start? I do not, Mr. Chairman. The first uh, agency this evening is Tri-County CAP, page 65, under agencies. Should be. Amy Goya. I am the Strategic Initiatives um, Director for Tri County Community Action. Okay, can you tell us a little bit of what your group does? So, Tri County CAP has been around, um, many of you are very familiar with it, for since 1965. We have um, several programs under the umbrella of Tri County CAP, um, many of which are do services here in Wolfboro, such as Head Start. Um, fuel, fuel assistance, which is both fuel and electric assistance, heating, um, guardianship, many programs that serve in this area. We, a few years back, we started, um, rather than asking as individual programs in the towns, we are collectively asking as an agency. And we came up with a formula to keep it fair and reputable um, between each of the towns. And um, for Carroll County, we are per resident. We multiply from the census number of people on the census times 2.25. And that's the amount of money that we ask for from that town. And we do that for each of the towns. One of the reasons why we ask for funding um, from the towns is because when we are asking for federal funds, we need to oftentimes match. So we have to present a match, and they have to be funds that are not assigned for anything special. Um, so <coughs> if you have uh, a charitable <coughs> fund that's, that funds us, oftentimes they'll say, well, we want this to go specifically for children under the age of five for dental. Um, so those funds we can't use as match. We have to have funds to do a match in order to get those larger dollars to offer all of these services in the towns. And so that's where town funding and, and county funding come in. In Carroll County, we only ask from the towns. We do not ask from the county. Um, our mission is to, um, I'm just going to read it here to make sure I don't miss it, mess it up. Tri-County Community Action provides opportunities to strengthen communities by improving the lives of low to moderate income families and individuals. And we do that by the services that we provide. Last year in Wolfboro, we served 375 individuals um, in Wolfboro. And then, excuse me, that... That was for 2021. Last year, in 2022, that client increased up to 527. Um, one of the concerns everyone, I'm sure, is aware of is fuel and electric. This year, there has been quite an increase in demand. Um, and also, we have increase in funding. We also have... Um, state funding available for those that are just missing the mark of qualifying and so how we've set it up is if you if anyone in your town applies for fuel assistance and they don't meet the um, eligibility mark then they're automatically applied to the state funding that's available it's only probably about 
under five hundred dollars, but in the economy <laughs> with the price of fuel, that's a help because we've noticed that there are many, many families and homes that have never qualified for fuel assistance that are needing it because of the prices. Um, so we have seen a big increase. Um, I'm not sure what other information you guys want or uh, you're pretty familiar with us. We do have um, in Wilfboro, I think it was the same number last year too, but Head Start, you do have a student in Wolfboro that is in our Head Start program. Um, and also like dental, um, the dental center is utilized quite a lot by the Wolfboro <coughs> residents, which was, was pleasing to me because I have a background um, before I was in Tri-County Cap running a mobile dental clinic, so it gets me excited when people are using the dental center. Um, so, our, our services are very much uh, available and being utilized in, in Wolfboro and have been throughout the years. Amy, do you have any idea uh, for our $14,436 investment, how much fuel we get that go up to the people in town? Well, I can give you the numbers from last year. So fuel assistance for 2022, <laughs> just fuel, not electric, just fuel, there was a, uh, Wolfboro was 103, and the value is $124,217. And then if you add the electrical, you would be looking at only one household, but it was $874 you would add to that. The year before, for fuel assistance, if I can find that, I grabbed it quick off my printer. Um, it was $105,125, and two households had received the electric last year, and it was seventeen, seventeen that you would add to that. So quite, you know, quite a bit of value um, of services just with those two programs coming to Wolfboro. Yeah, about every dollar that we spend, we get ten dollars worth of service to the people, I guess. With it, just for just the for the fuel assistance, fuel. yeah, and then of course when you add in the other programs too, it's. Um, let me see what the total value for this year was. $228,714 for Wolfboro citizens. Value of services. Right. So that's about every dollar we invest and we get about $20 back worth of services. Roughly, yeah. With, yes, yeah. Okay, any other questions for Amy? Why the reduction in $14? Um, was what the, why there's a fourteen dollar reduction from last year? Oh, <laughs> let me tell you, I'm excited. I know the answer to this. I love it. I get nervous that you're going to ask me like a really big budget question, and I'm not going to be able to answer. But um, that is because we last year it had been so many years that from the 2010 census that I did an estimated. I looked up and they did have an estimated for New Hampshire. Um, what the estimated 2019 would be because it would just made it a little more fair and reputable for everyone and then we got the 2020 and so the actual 2020 is when I used it for this year's figures it it altered that $14 so last year we were pretty close $14 so that was good stick to your numbers <laughs> I just got one more question, Amy. Uh, yeah. You, you mentioned guardian services. What is that? Guardianship, and I've learned pe learn learning more pieces and pieces as uh, over the years that I've been here. It's really quite an amazing program. It services individuals that may not be able to manage their funding well themselves to care for themselves, and so they will have. Um, someone assigned to help them with their finances. Um, they also, some situations, they're taken advantage of in their homes um, because they get this income in, and then sometimes it's unfortunate, but family or friends take advantage of that. So when they go through the guardianship, it protects them. It protects them from anyone, you know, kind of taking advantage of their 
meager income that's there to support them. And so they, they have somebody that you know coaches them, watches their money, pays their bills, and then helps them understand like that money that's left over um, for them to use, like how it can be used and um, in their best interest. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay, thanks for coming down, Amy. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> what coming to Wolfboro or just the holiday? Oh, well, it's this. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, you scratched it. <laughs> have a good night. You too, thank, thank you. Okay, Amy, this is the lecture fine. So it's got its own tab, Municipal Electric Fund. Um, just a, a reminder, um, Municipal Electric is an enterprise fund. Um, it's funded through user fees. Um, we'll go through the, the three divisions of Barry's budget. And uh, one capital outlay item. Barry, do you have any thing you'd like to start off with is over the past year that's occurred? No, not a, not a lot of uh, huge difference in the budget. You're going to see our purchase power actually went down because of our contract price. And I think uh, there's a couple other line items that perhaps offset that. But other than that, pretty much uh, uh, balanced uh, with what last year's requests were. If you remember, Barry came to us three years ago now with a request for $40,000 um, for consultant fees and lawyer fees to do a blend and extend of the electric contract. Um, Barry really hit that at the sweet point in conjunction with those consultants and landed us a five-year contract. Um, and we've seen what the other utilities in the state are seeing. So um, that was money timely and very well spent. Um, kudos to Barry, his department, the consultants, and I think the residents are very thankful for that. There will be one, uh, one thing you may notice this year, uh, I think it's in consultants under administration. We have a request for $35,000, which is uh, obviously above what we would normally ask for, and that is because uh, Jim has arranged to bring in a consultant to actually get a hard number. We've sort of been guessing our payment in lieu of taxes for the last 10 years because DRA has been unable to have uh, the time and resources to come out and evaluate our plan. And so versus just playing this guessing game, um, we're going to do a formal valuation. And that's the $35,000 bump in that line item. So I think that's a good thing for all of us. We, mm -hmm. we need to know where we're at. So Jim, what yeah. do you think, You had to project. Do you think you're on the right side or the wrong side of the estimates we've been using? Um, when the last time we were able to get DRA out here, thinking that we were going to be way under what the projected was, mm -hmm. um, it actually came in low. And so we made the adjustment at that time. But that's 10 years ago. I, I, I'm thinking we're going to be under um, what the payment in lieu of taxes well, we probably should be. I, I can't nice. say I would, you know, <laughs> gladly endorse that. But, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is, right? I mean, we should be paying our fair share. So, sure. so anyways, I, it will... I, it will more than benefit you as the town to pay the $35,000 uh, to get a hard number there. I'll, I'll leave it at that. It seems yeah, like a big number. Okay. Yeah, that won't be something you see, you know, every every other year or even. That might be every, I would like to think it would be done maybe every five, ten years. Okay. It's overdue now. No, okay, no so question. That's going to be my question. Yeah, so I it's mean, sort of a one-off. It is. That's why you're going to see the spike this year. And okay. it, there's no, nothing to lead me to believe it'll be a continual request. Gotcha. Yeah. So That's the Brian D. Fogg thing. We got it. Okay. okay, Jimmy, you want to start on page one? Sure thing. Okay, uh, 200 series. <clears throat> That's it on the 200.
400 series. Uh, did we skip over 300? We did 200. I didn't think it was 300. Here you're you're on page one, Bob. The, the um, personnel administration. Thank you for it. Okay, 400 series. Seven hundred series. Okay, now we'll move on to electric administration. <clears throat> One hundred series. Two hundred series. 300. Question. Yep. Uh, we discussed 311, which is at $35,000. Why 380 um, on the outside services? I'm, I'm, I think that's the one. Mm -hmm. That's the administrative outside services account for? Yeah. No, forget it. Forget it. I'm in the wrong, okay. wrong, wrong church right there. Okay. Get we'll address that when we get there. Oh, we didn't get to the right view. Sorry. Okay, 400, Sorry, Mr. 400 series. That's okay. Uh, you'll see our electricity request was down a little bit, so our solar uh, system down there is doing its job. We're running a little bit of a credit right now, so we're able to bump that down. Where is that located, Barry? Right on the roof of the armory building. You can't see it from the road, though, can you? You can't see it from the road. It's on yeah. the roof on the... Okay. Just on the far down. side. Yeah. Uh, 500 series. A 600. A 700. 800. And that's it on administration. Let's go to uh, distribution. Page 14. Uh, 100 series. Two hundred series. Three hundred. Question? Yeah. Line three eighty. Um I'm looking at the detail in the back, and it looks like I see it's a fifth item, $35,000 armory entrance gate added by the board. So, yeah, so, so I, had it, I had this project originally slated as a capital outlay, but the, the cost of it didn't really warrant such. So we put it into the actual operating budget versus a standalone capital outlay, it, which it still would have been the operating budget. Sure. Just, but yeah. you, my question is, is it a one-off? Same thing. This is it. Yeah, our gate down there. I don't know if you've seen it, but it sort of looks like something from a, yeah, a junkyard versus a professional yeah. office and electric department building and security and whatnot. So. Okay. All right, so it's a one-off. Yeah, this wouldn't be a... Thank you. Okay, 400. Six hundred. Question. Yep. Line six ten. So just, this. I just got a question. Um, I see that Port of Selectman added fifty thousand dollars to request an MID director for escalation costs. I understand that. But this next line, I I need a little. I need to understand what the job work sales year to date to offset costs. What's that? So anytime we do a job that would would warrant us being able to charge a customer. Um, Somebody's building a new line to something, they want it to be underground versus overhead. They pay, we have charges for all of those costs. We also have charges associated with work that we have to do on poles to allow other utilities, such as cable, phone, fiber, <coughs> to have room on that pole. Okay. All of those are billable items. Right. And so 
a lot of the a lot of the expenses we uh, you know accrue from for material and for labor really there's an offset to it and that would be job work sales um, I think that has the year to date number I think we're actually up higher we're probably more like 140,000 right now so, so that would be on the revenue side right? It would be on the revenue. It's not going to show in the budget, obviously, because no, no, no. we don't operate as a revolving fund or anything. But it's just there. I think the board has requested we show that so that we we all understand that there is work we have to do that is billable. And okay. you know, so. and then the price, the line item was six ten. Just stuff is crazy to get now. Transformers yeah, no, have I, gone up threefold. I can, so, imagine, I can imagine the other stuff is just out of sight. Even in preparation when we first did the budget versus when we met mm -hmm. with the board, we realized Transformers had gone, <clears throat> so that's where the bump went up. Okay. Yeah. So it, yeah, I think yes, the question, Casey isn't here, so, but is there a, a line item somewhere in the revenue where we could find that job work, job work sales year number? So. Um, we we track it in house, but uh, Casey would also track it. it. It may not be quite so refined in hers because it probably shows. I think it says income electric. Yeah. On the sheet that I, I get. It may see. include other things such as scrap metal or scrap wire sales and a few other things where uh, we give her a report like every month sure. for what we build out and got paid for because some of it may be even accidents. But uh, I just I think we just see. Um, uh, income from electric and all that's grouped together in a figure that comes across. Yeah, we, I, I look so. at it and we um, I don't want to beat the horse with it, but I think we have, might want to. I'll ask Casey the question. About, I pull that out of a separate line item that we can look at because it really, you can get scrap metal sales in there. It might be an interesting number to look at. I can down, show you that in, right In our right. monthly reports, yeah. you'll get the revenue and then it'll be in there. In the front of that. I can so I can look at job work sales. You can look at electric, but she can give you the breakup underneath that electric figure. Okay. okay. But you'll see that total mm -hmm. You want to take a gander? This yeah, yeah. this is our report. There's multiple pages there, but these would be all billable. Oh, okay. All right. If I can just get that back, out mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's fine. So okay. that's that's the detail. That's this is the detail of everything that we build out and what we receive. Yeah. Right. yeah. And let me see if I can get a hard number for you as of today. It's uh, it's one hundred and thirty thousand one oh three. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Okay, uh, seven hundred series eight hundred and nine hundred. That's it in distribution. We'll go to uh Generation. One hundred series. Two hundred. Three hundred. Four hundred. <coughs> Good show on four ten. Yeah, huh? That's uh, that's, yeah, that's a blessing at this time uh, of year, of uh, of year with what the other utilities are having to do. So. Six hundred. Seven hundred. Next in on generation. So under capital outlay, page 15, there's a singular request um, for engineering on Melody, Keniston Island. Um, this is the project that Barry has brought through CIP. Um, this is the engineering for a larger project that you'll see coming in front of you next year. Barry? And that would be that would be done as a warrant on it. And the reason I like to do the engineering the year before is so it, it gives us a hard price on what to budget next year for the actual project. Because it gives us quantities of every single item we need, the number of transformers, 
and we'll actually reach out as part of the engineering and get contractor pricing at that time. Perhaps I, we may even bid it in, you know, w with the uh, with the idea that it would, uh, you know, warrant approval um, in the 2023, but uh, 2024 budget to to continue, but. So it just allows me to get a real hard number so that we're not playing a guessing game with prices all over the place like they are with materials and labor, so. Uh, quick question. Um, is this part of the, the whole, the cabling business going out from so, up to the islands or is this not part of that? So Bob, this would be actually when we get out there and the overhead, there's an overhead system out there. It's okay. all the rent original so it's the physical stuff on the islands. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Tough to get at, tough to <coughs> get equipment there, <coughs> expensive to maintain, but okay. we own it. Jim, where's the boat? Warren article. So that is, a, article. that is a Warren article. I don't know, are you prepared? I mean... No, how come it's a Warren article? I'm just wondering. Uh, I said the same thing until I went and looked at prices, John, of, of boats for a working class boat. We're looking at between 150 and 170 thousand dollars, so it was our decision to put it in as a warrant article. Okay. You buy new or you buy used? No, uh, we buy new. Can you look at new? There's a lot of old barges, a lot of old stuff that you're not really still looking, serviceable. But something that size, though, we're looking for like 22 to 24 foot range. Um, that was more of a work boat. Our boat now is a sort of a pleasure. I have a presentation here, although I wasn't really, I only have three copies, but I mean, John, if you want to, if you guys want to look at them as a group, have you, have you done it with the water selectment stuff? Have you done all the? We've already gone through the Yeah, board. we've seen it. Yeah. 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 And with that, um, I mean, feel free to, I can email them to you if you'd like to preview this. How old's the other boat? I'm sorry. How old's the old boat? Uh, it'll be 20. It'll be 20 years old in 2024 when we actually receive the new one. So, and we we actually sustained some damage. If you go through the uh, the PowerPoint I prepared there, you can see some of the the insurance company actually has deemed it a total loss. Basically, a robo. Yeah. Yeah, it's more of a pleasure craft at the time. It, it, Three big guys and 500 pounds of equipment. Yeah. In your <laughs> we actually. We actually have gotten pulled over by them. <laughs> they pulled over. They, they made us back under the bridge. I didn't think that was real safe maneuver to have them, but they actually, because they claimed we didn't have enough freeboard uh, because we had three guys in there and uh, wire and equipment, and we were issued a warning for overweight. I don't know. I was like, it makes it easier to stuff. They made us back under the bridge. Against the, I'm like, can we just over there? Can we talk? The mountains, and though they needed to put on a show, I don't think. Yeah, they had the blue lights going the whole deal. It was pretty embarrassing. So yeah, that would be the one. And again, that would be funded through user fees. Yeah, that would be. There would be no effect on tax rate or electric rate. Built into his program. Is the rate that the uh, the island folks pay different than the mainland? Can't really do that, Steve. Just, just question. Yeah, no, you can't. I'm I'm going to tell you, it's a loss. Mm -hmm. um, it's and there's no utilities that'll tell you otherwise. But um, it's expensive to have island customers. Lost because of the, because of if you have a well, you know, I, I go out there. We have, we have one broken pole maybe a year during a storm. You know, I'll have thirty thousand dollars into getting and everything's lead, so you got to bring a lead drill out. Well, we'll never get fifty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars in revenue in the course of a year out there. Not even close. So. <laughs> Barry, have you looked in to see how, uh, this looks like it's going to take a pretty good chunk of the dock for you guys. So uh, it, it would be like uh, approximately three, four feet long, bigger than the boat we have now. Well, um, what about the width? It looks like it's much more wider than the one that you yeah, have. Yeah, it has like an eight foot beam. Um, well, it's going to be no, no bigger than the uh, fire boat. The fire boat will actually be bigger, but we'll, we'll need to discuss some of the logistics of 
parking it in a safe place after spending that kind of money on it. Yeah. So one of the interesting things, you know, Barry's equipment is heavy. He's got that tra those transformers he's going to load up. Therefore, he's got a hoist <coughs> programmed into this thing. Um, yeah. the, the likelihood is this will probably, we'll do some reconfiguration down there so the boat can be staged in a place where he can load a transformer if needed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it, we understand that there's going to be some logistic changes that have to happen at the docks to make this parking happen. So this won't be probably till next summer. Year, year well, I, summer. I mean, I, I'm assuming we're going to be a year build time after we get approval because yeah. these aren't off the rack boats. Brian might be able to help us out a little more on that. I'm not a boat guy, but I, 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 from what I hear, it's probably a year build because it's more of a specialty. Yeah, I'm not familiar with this no. Munson brand. Well, I, I, that's an example. I mean, there's, there's a couple, there's three or four manufacturers out there. They happen to be uh, out of Massachusetts, local, have a good name in the utility type boating industry. That's why we use them as a, an example. Um, but. And it will be multi-purpose, because if the fire department needed it for an emergency, because that can do stuff that the fire boat doesn't do. It's got that launch on the front everything. So it looks like it'll still float even if someone forgets to put the... The, the, the ramp, ramp up. The ramp. <laughs> uh, I hope the pilot sees it. Hoping somebody can. Yeah, hopefully somebody catches it. We could uh, have a submarine program. If not, I don't know a lot about, about boats. But at the very least, you might have another adventure with them. Yeah, yeah, right. They probably would appreciate it. But it would be good to get the passengers off the Winnie Bell when that starts to sink. Yeah. <laughs> no, that won't happen. It's pulled out of the water. It's over in Guilford. Yeah. It? yeah. Oh, well. Would, would that be due to Captain Good. Error? No. Okay. Just check it. No. Never. You still have a motorcycle? <laughs> yeah. I do, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the captain always goes down with the ship. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do we have anything else for Barry? Barry, you're doing a great job. Really appreciate you guys' hard work over this past couple of days with the storm and everything. Uh, you got to thank the guys more than me. They 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 put in uh, a lot of hours over the weekend, but yeah. um, I think you'll see we fared pretty well compared to a lot of utilities. Like when I was up in Austin, uh, the job was parking. There must have been about 30 trucks that I'd never seen before. Where are those? There were white trucks that said something went along. There are there's there's rigs from all over the really? United States uh, working for Co-op and Eversource right now. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of uh, municipals from down in Mass are up here yes. as well. So, yeah, um, we didn't have to bring in outside help. So that's good. Yeah, we, we were able to weather the storm. But, so it's good. Yeah. Goes to a tree trimming program. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't trim enough, and that's yeah. the more preventative thing I tell people. Um, so we've been trying to build our program every year. And yeah. I think it's starting to pay off. So, if you get a tree that's an issue, you can tell. Okay, unless we have any questions, I <coughs> thank you, Barry, for all the work you guys do. You're welcome. I think we had a question on the, <coughs> on the floor here about ash trees. And you going to do the rest of those? Uh, Jim was. That's the, I think you were talking just briefly. So I, know I, I actually the there's actually a warrant article coming forward this okay. year for um, a tree okay. program. Um, We've had a study done on South Main Street. It's identified 260 trees that need to be removed. Some of those are on town property. Some of those are within the right of way. Um, actually had a meeting this morning with the tree warden, Kurt Titus. Um, we discussed um, this spring into summer evaluating trees on town property, town parks, etc., to be able to determine if it's time for them to be harvested if they're a har uh, hazardous tree, um, and also to get him um, working in conjunction with Barry, um, Steve Randall, um, whoever the new town engineer may be, and the maintenance foreman at Parks and Rec, to be able to utilize him more as the tree warden to say, yeah, this tree needs to go, um, or, and to maintain trees. So it, it was a productive meeting this morning. Um, a lot of moving pieces at this point, but uh, we know we've got a problem with trees, and it was it was actually a very 
uh, informative conversation for me. So uh, you will see a warrant article asking to create a capital reserve expendable trust fund. Um, and we're also working with Parks and Rec on um, where we're a tree city USA on a, uh, you know, we've had an adopt a bench program forever and it's worked well and we're running out of places to put benches. So we're looking at an adopt a tree program. Did you talk to the tree warden about putting together what types of trees that we should plant where we take down trees based on our climate now? So he actually brought that up. You know, he talked about climate change, um, how some trees which were originally native to the area are really no longer native. Um, and some of the invasive species that we're seeing, um, they may turn into native type of trees because of global warming. Um, and it's not as simple as just dropping a tree in the ground, um, understanding what the <coughs> soils are um, and what would be the best suited tree to plant based on the soil. So it, it, it's a whole science, that's for sure, but it was, it was very enlightening for me. Um, and he's, he's really interested in working with the town. Um, he said there was a time when he first became the tree warden um, back in the 70s that they would go through and plant 50 trees a year. And we've kind of gotten away from that. So um, more to come, but it was very productive to me. And, and the trees that we're taking down on the property, I'm hoping we're going to try and keep some, some of the wood aside and, and use it for the... Um, wood bank? Um, I'm not at liberty to talk about that, I guess. You know, if, if that, it depends on who owns the tree. Um, if it's know, on town property. If it's on town property, you know, I, I think the, the takeaway on it as well is, you know, if it's a hazardous tree and, and the wood is no good, um, we don't want it sitting on the side of the road for a long period of time, but if it, if it has a value, we want to be able to repurpose it, absolutely. John, I have a question on this subject. Go ahead, John. <clears throat> what department is responsible for the town trees? What department? So I think, well, if I can speak to you, I mean, we all, I, I think there are many departments that have budgets, tree budgets, us being one of them. But there's all little niches. We're, we're, the electric department's involved with the ones that are that come into play with power lines. Uh, public works it gets involved with trees that are in the public way that not so, not necessarily in the power line. And then of course all the parks. We don't have the, any park. one person that's sort of looking out for it. Our tree warden, I guess, is we, our we have a, have a tree warden, and the hopes are to be able to utilize that individual more. Um, regularly going forward to work with Barry, Steve Randall, Jim McConus, um, and the town engineer to give them guidance when they need guidance about a tree. But I, I have a very real concern because of one of the biggest ones is right on the other side of my driveway, over the wires, power lines. I understand and that goes right back to Mr. Titus this summer working with the parks and rec staff to go through and identify the trees on the various parks to recommend maintenance, removal, um, something in between um, and you know it, it boils down to which piece of property it's on. If it's on town something that parks and rec manages they'll deal with Jim Oponis. Okay. Barry, this uh, on your old boat, your electric boat, what's the horsepower of that motor you got in the back there? Do you know? Is that Honda? Yeah, I think you, I think you can read it on there. Yeah, well, I'm more to think it's a 115. I think it's a 115. That's fairly new, isn't it? The motor? And it's the same It's the same error as the boat. We, oh. That's the original. We originally spec'd a, a, a much smaller motor than that. Yeah. And the only reason we ended up with that size one is because the dealership had it, and they, they said they could put it on at that time without waiting to get like a 75 horsepower motor, if I can remember right. 
So we paid no more for the larger motor because they had it in stock. Do you so think that would fit on the uh, the bell? No, the boat two of the fire rescue. I don't know what boat two is. But so what is it, Jim? A sixteen footer or something? I can't. I, I wouldn't dare to well, answer the question. They're looking for a new motor. Oh, really? That's quite a motor for a sixteen foot. Yeah. <laughs> My limited capacity of boating. Again, I defer to Brian. Brian, but. Okay, anything else? So, thank you for coming in. All right, it. thank you. Have a good holiday. Have a good holiday. Have a good holiday. You can have them uh, if you'd like to look at them. We already did. All right, you guys are pretty quick. <laughs> We're very quick. Yeah. We'll, we'll see it again, hopefully. Oh, yeah. We'll see it again. 18, man. 17. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, Jim, that's all that I see for presentation. Do you agree with that? I agree with you. What else have we got for other business? Okay, I just got a quick question. Uh, what's going on with the booster building? We all set on that? Yes, I, I'm, I, did, Comfortable? I did some math and it's all good. And, and we don't need to revisit. Okay. So, Email him right now. Yeah, just email him and tell him. Okay. It, appears, it appears that that line item is justified. Thank you. The uh, you guys have done all the loan articles so far. Uh, they will be re hopefully conducting final review Wednesday night on warrant articles. Okay. Have you done the police department yet's request for the SRO? Uh, yes, it's teed up, but okay. it has not been voted on by the board of selectmen. We haven't voted on any of them. Okay. Would it? Be unreasonable. I think they were funded from one and a half positions, and now they're going to two. Would it be possible to get rid of that half position? Uh, that's a conversation you'll have to have with the police commission. Okay. Could you just see drop them an email or something? And see when would you talk? like them here? Uh, whenever they'd like to come. Okay. Uh, I will reach preferably out, after the holidays. I will reach out to yeah. the police commission and. I don't know if it's all been finalized with the school board and all this other stuff. I just was looking to think if we could say maybe. Twenty-five thousand. Okay. Does uh, anybody have anything else for other business? Okay. Let's move on to the approval of the minutes, uh, December fifth. <coughs> Any changes anyone wants to make? Can I get a motion to approve the minutes for the no, no. Thank you, John. Second. Thank you, Bob. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving December 5th as written, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now on to the minutes of December 15th. Any changes or admissions on any of these? Can I get a motion to approve as written? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes of December 15, 2022, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, any public comment? Jim, can I make one other request of you? Can we get a breakdown of the overtime for each department? Divide it up. You don't have to put the person's name, just on how much they, how much they paid in overtime. So you're looking for um, funds expended in overtime um, for what time frame? 2022. For 2022? Yeah. Is that going to be difficult for Casey? I know she's probably busy. No, we, we can run that number pretty easily. Okay. So, does anyone else have any other requests that we need? Okay. No public comment. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Oh, no. Okay, second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Probably be a long night tomorrow night. <laughs>